Hey everybody, me Keith, Elder Rock, back on the bench. Yeah, sorry so long, it's been, it's been a little while since I made any videos, but I was on vacation, and I had some maintenance and parts and reorganizing, and uh, living in Thailand, I had to take some time to vacation, so... But we're back on the bench. We got a lot of projects in the queue, so let's get to it. So first things first, getting getting back into this. One reason I took a little break, my desoldering gun needed some maintenance. So today, uh, for the Goot desold the Goot, what is this called? The TP100. We're going to look at uh, intermediate maintenance on this thing. You have your normal maintenance, your user maintenance, cleaning, maintaining all that. But sometimes, at least with this one, I don't know about the Heiko, I don't have one yet, but this Goot brand is actually a, a really good brand. This is really good quality stuff. And I had to get some parts for this. So I've got my gun kind of taken apart. I got so I got my parts, and we're going to go through uh, some maintenance and kind of what happened. So ba uh, we're going to cut there, and we're going to come on the bench, and we're going to go over the inside of this Goot gun, the replacement parts, and I think with any desoldering gun, some of these parts are going to be ap applicable of things that you want to look at. If you start seeing a difference in your gun and all your user maintenance looks good, you may have to go deeper into your solder gun. Okay, so let's cut there and let's get you on the bench. All right, so we're just going to start filming here. I'm working on my overhead um, camera set up so we'll, we'll hope it works out oh uh, okay so well i already have started okay so I, we need to start at the beginning of this thing why why is the desolder gun all tore apart so we're just going to start at the beginning the solder gun is taken apart if you ever use your solder gun and and you notice that you're losing you're losing vacuum you're losing suction like what was happening to me i would get the gun hot, I would start off on my pins, the first pin, the first leg would desolder good, the second, third, fourth, and as I, as I continued on, the, the, the suction got less, the holes were not cleaning, the first couple few holes would clean, and then I noticed the, you know, as I went on, the, the, the holes were not cleaning out at all, so, and, you know, your normal maintenance, the tip, I knew my tip was good, my catch can, my catch can nice and clean, and um, yeah, the tip was good, and there's also, where's the other part? This is, this is the back end of the canister. There's a little filter that goes in here, um, and, I kind of, and that guy was definitely clean too. So all that was clean, but there was something going on, so uh, I, I tore into it a little bit more. If I can zoom that up, I don't. I don't want to make. Okay, so, so I took I took the case off, uh, disassembled it, took the case off, and inside, how it works, is you have a two-stage pump, kind of sits in here like this, has a two-stage pump, and you have the nozzle that connects from the back of your can that I call it the can, your catch can connects to the back of the, the slide mechanism, this guy, and he sits in there, goes to the pump. Can you guys see? Well, I cannot see with my hands in the way. So that guy sits in there like that, and the pump pulls, the pump pulls, and then ejects. So, okay, so, and, oh, the most important part, the most important part, on this is this is the shaft this is the actual the diaphragm the pump diaphragm connected to a shaft connected to the motor and it's got an offset so that's actually what makes the noise the because that's offset and then that thing just it just it just um kind of like a piston right it's like a crankshaft call that your crankshaft and you have a compression sto stroke, and you have, call it like the intake stroke. Um, but yeah, when that thing, it just kind of, it's offset. So when it cranks, it's kind of like a piston. So kind of doing some visual inspection, and then 
kind of what I found. Definitely what I found. This is the old one. Look what I found. There was a freaking hole in the diaphragm. And it's right where... It's right where it moves. It's right where all the movement is on that rubber. I mean, I, I've used this gun a lot. So that's not surprising. So I did... It looks all crazy because I, I took some silicone, some RTV... Tried to patch that hole. Um, might keep that for a backup for a rainy day. But so I went to the Goot dealer, talked to them, or the dealer I bought it, and they have parts available. So the first thing I did was I bought the replacement. I bought the replacement rubber. Now I've got my camera. Oh, here it is. So I bought my replacement rubber. No problem, right? No problem. Well, no problem until if you guys have a Goot TP100, listen up. Um, this screw, this screw, they lock tight. This is an aluminum shaft, steel screw, and it's drilled and tapped. And they use lock tight in here. You cannot get that screw out. And if you take that screw out, you're going to end up like this. You're going to you're going to snap the head off inside. You can in hindsight. What you got to do if you ever have to replace that, you got to you're going to have to get this in a in a vise. Chuck that up and heat that up. It's just aluminum. That'll get the Loctite kind of soft. Expand the aluminum, and then you should be able to get your screw out. So, okay, so I got, I, I snapped the screw, and then um, I tried to get the shaft to turn out of this bearing. So it's a bearing seated on there, and same deal. I knew that was threaded, and I thought, okay, well, I just have to turn that off. Well, guess what? Not really. So I snapped that off too. So I snapped, I snapped the, um, turned out the threads in the bearing. So living in Thailand, you get all this crazy stuff done. And there's a small machine shop down the road. If I was at home, I would, I, I will draw and tap that out. I kept these because I, I can pretty much fix that. So, but beware if you go to change that rubber, it's not as easy as just changing the rubber. So you have like a washer in there, you have a screw, and okay, so went back to the dealer, I'm like, hey, I broke that shaft, and then he's like, well, the only way to get that shaft is to buy the whole motor assembly. I'm like, ah, oh, crap, okay, whatever. So the motor shaft assembly was like, I mean, it was like 60 bucks. I mean, not, not cheap, not expensive, but better than buying a new one. Okay, so... That's what happened. That was the main, that was, well, one failure. Had a hole in the rubber, in the diaphragm. Okay, so, and this is what I, before I even took it apart, I, I wondered about this guy. Because I was like, well, there's got to be a tube. I wonder if it gets full. And I'm sorry I don't have it on video, but this tube was completely full. Like a clogged artery, the dude would have had, you'd have a stroke. This thing was completely full of flux. Like, I couldn't even blow into it. Like, you could not blow through this tube. It was completely full. So, you have a, um, you have a retention spring to keep the, keep the tube from collapsing down. Took it out. IPA cleaned. Nice clean artery. Whatever. Okay, so, let's talk about the pump. I got everything. The pump is just a simple two-stage pump. I call it a two-stage pump. It's a, um, so you can see you have your, your orifice, you have your, you have your, um, like a reed valve. I call them reed valves. Kind of the same thing from like a two-stroke motor. So on the compression stroke, on the compression stroke, one of these will, will seal and the other one will force the air same thing. So, and then on the intake stroke, it goes opposite. It will seal on the other side and allow air to move on the other side. So, just a simple kind of two-stage little pump here. So, that is where we are. So, I have my parts. What I'm lucky that I did not... Um, I'm going to sit down now and we're going to get to work. So we got to take this shaft, put it on that motor and, and get everything reassembled. And I'm, I don't, 
I didn't know if I was going to film all of this, but let's just get started. Okay, so you do have some um, rubber bushings for retention because this, you know, with this being offset, that creates a lot of vibration, and that's what kind of creates all the noise. Okay, so let's get this other shaft off. We're going to take, excuse me, we're going to take this guy. Let's get him off. Hopefully I don't break it. That actually, no, that will actually come out. That will actually come out. So we're going to take the whole shaft assembly, the bearing, everything, and put onto this guy. I'll try to keep my hands out of the way. All right, so there is a, um, I don't know if you can see, there is a collar for that screw. That's got to be on there to for the rotation. So assembly, screw, you can see it's got the collar on there. That should be just a straight drop in. Let's get that guy on. Enough dinking around. Yeah, I was on vacation for a couple weeks, just kind of touring around Thailand and Cambodia. And I had my parts here at the house, and I'm like, oh, man, I want to go home and, and get back on the bench. <laughs> try to keep my hands out of there. So we'll try to match that torque. You know, like what I tell my students, you know, you got to feel... You got to feel your torque when you're putting stuff back together. Well, I'm sorry about my hands in the way, but. Yep, it's tight. Yep, that guy bottoms out. You can feel at that collar. Because it's got that collar, it will, it, will just, it will just bottom out and go ahead and give it a little bit of torque action. Okay. So, we've got these... We've got these rubber bushings there that kind of lock into the plastic. I hope this angle is good, guys. I It's up above me, and I can't really see what I'm filming. But I know this is my play field. Okay, so let's... I don't know if you can see. So there's like two grooves here. Oh. Some crap flux. Okay. There's two grooves for that, those rubber, for the rubber bushings, kind of like motor mount. It's exactly what it is, they're motor mount bushings. Um, there's not a key to align, there's not a key to align that motor, so I think you just have to make sure that it's squarely seated. And there ain't no, let's take a look here. Let's get that stuff out of the way. Ah, there we go. There was a wire. So it's got a little saddle there. That's fine. So now, put this guy back. Yep. So those sit on there like that. You have guide pins for the trigger assembly. And then like a little channel for the rest of the stuff to sit in. And that guy is seated properly. I imagine if that was not seated properly, your gun is going to be way out of balance so let's get him tightened back in yes that looks that looks okay just want to make sure he's okay so on the top of this I only have uh, on the top of this. You do have a metal washer, um, or it depends on top of the rubber washer. So you should be able to tighten it down. But you want to be careful. You're gonna want to be careful here because you could maybe break that plastic. I don't know if you if you go too tight. So I'm just going to go down until I feel them, like, tighten down. Like, right there, they're tight. And let's just give it a little bit of a snug. I don't want to break anything. So let's tighten that guy back down. Okay, cool. I don't know if that, it looks like that side is up just a little higher. That guy might be up just just a little higher. Um, 
And I think that looks okay. I think that looks okay. Actually, let me, I'm gonna loosen this one and see, and maybe try to turn it a little. I want, I want everything in, aligned as cent center as I can because it's that crankshaft has a pretty good offset. I don't want it shaking more than it has to. There we go. And what I'm looking at here to line that up is just the the flushness of that rubber washer. I'll just try to get those in the same position because you can. We'll sit in there and rotate just a little. There we go. There we go. I like that a lot better. Okay. Okay. All right. That's better. I like that. The top of that motor. Now that motor's sitting in nice and straight. No alignment pins there, but that's okay. Just eyeball it. Uh, okay, so now what's next? Let's get, let's work on, actually, before I forget, let's put this collar and the screw back in here so we don't lose it for the future. Yeah, I'll just be an extra part. I guess if that motor ever goes bad, I have an extra. All right, screw collar in place, ready for storage. Good to go. Put him off to the side. And, oh, my God, can you guys even see what I'm working on? Okay, so let's look at this pump. Now this is going to be the fun, boring part, but I'm, I'm going to I'm going to keep rolling. So you have your your diaphragm. It's not a diaphragm. It's like a reed valve, it's like a reed valve. So it looks. There's a little bit of gunk in there. Let me clean that. We're not major gunk, but some, some flux residue. I want to get that stuff out because if you have a little bit of residue, shit will start sticking there or stuff stuff will start sticking there again. So, all right. And I, I, I can tell, I know you guys can't see it. There, uh, One side of this was like blackened. And so I'm just going to line this up the right way. You can't really put this in backwards, I think. It's it's universal. I believe, looking at it, it's symmetrical. So it doesn't really matter what way you put it on there. But, you know, I'm a weirdo mechanic. It already has, um, like, it already has imprinted, like, where it seats, where it had been seating forever. So I'm just going to put, I want to put it back the same exact way, just to make sure there's no leakage. And I think the same thing with this guy. I think, I think, actually, no. So there's going to be, there's going to be a difference in the way it goes on. If you look at this side, if you look at this, one of your holes is down kind of in the bottom. And then one of your other holes is a little bit higher on the, on the side of the cup. Um, yeah, it's been like three weeks, so yeah, I should have. I don't know. And there's really no key on this guy. I'm gonna say, how would that work? He's gonna be the end. And then the out. Yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna roll with it. The one way. Hmm. Yeah, and actually looking at it, I do not think that is symmetrical. Yep, I might lie to you guys. I don't think no.
Oh, okay. You can only put it on one way. I'm sorry, guys. Memory from taking this apart three weeks ago. Okay, here's the deal. You can only put it together one way. And I believe I believe that's symmetrical. But if you look at it, this, this input... Input... <laughs> Um, you do have, you do have an input and an output on each side. So this, this, this valve has got to go down and then you have, yeah, small hole for your one valve, small hole for your one valve. So you can't really mess it up. Well, you could mess it up. Even if you put that on the wrong way, you could mess it up. So easy breezy, easy breezy. Boop, boop. All right. Cool. Thanks for hanging out, watching my video. If, um, man, I, I, if you guys like this, if you want to, you know, just leave me some comments and a subscribe really helps me to, to get my channel going. Um, I would appreciate it. And I know they're long videos. A lot of people just want to watch video. They want to go right to what they want to see watch learn what they need to learn and then move on and and you know I, I get that i'm the same way but i think with the electronics you know for learning i hope you guys are here to learn and maybe help fix your own stuff i think um you know longer more detailed videos are are kind of needed all right so i got a bucket full of parts and i'm trying to remember which ones so i think I think I'm gonna go with the ones that have oops, they have Loctite on them. So in here, these thread these actually thread into brass inserts. And I'm guessing I can't remember, but I think that's the ones that had Loctite on them. I had because this is gonna shake around like crazy. It's gonna have a lot of this is gonna have a lot of um, impact. So I'm going with the formerly Loctited screws back into this guy. Can you guys still see okay? Yeah, kind of, not really. Ah, sorry, guys. And same thing, when you torque, this is all plastic right here. When you torque these, I would just go back and forth very slowly. And you, I don't know how... There's not a torque rating in there in the manual. Yep, I'm not going to go very much tighter with that. All right, now let's give it, I'm going to give it the, um, kind of want to, let's see. Yep. Yeah, don't take this the wrong way. I can blow but not suck. <laughs> That's awful, right? Yep, I can blow through. And not suck. Yep, I'd say she's working. Okay. And this this one is your input. Let's see. I'm going to, I think that's your output. Okay, you're going to have, it's going to be, okay, good deal. Good deal. Let's try. Yep, that's your output. That's your input. You can suck but not blow, and you can you can blow and not suck. <laughs> you guys have fun with that in the comments. So okay. So now the whole purpose, the why we're here, is because of this diaphragm. Ah. Is because that diaphragm was bad. So it will just seat over the new, over this part. I'm kind of, I'm just kind of looking at that. I don't really want, there's some manufacturing like powderiness to that. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get too crazy. I'm afraid to use IPA on it because it could... It could damage. Okay, so there is a key. There's a key here at the bottom of the case. And the motor has, you could actually put it in two ways. But 
the tube it goes up so let's just get it in like that let's get it in kind of where it will sit and we'll see so there is some movement there there is some movement there okay so let's let's get this guy I guess it'll go yeah let's get him seated okay see he is it's weird that there's no lip or anything on there this is just a one seal it just seals around and I believe these are the stops there's these little tabs on the pump case I believe you just slide that up I believe you just slide slide that up until it seats okay so let's got to move that shaft until we get the right distancing I think that's it yep that's it so I mean, look, can you guys still see yeah so the sh the whole motor and pump assembly is not like square to the case so don't let that don't let that fool you but when you look at this I guess if you're just inspecting it you just want to make sure you have a 90 degree it's 90 degree you want when that spins you just want to make sure yeah you know it would be like that well I don't know I don't actually know which way this motor spins and I use this gun a lot it took a long I've probably been using that for over a year and a half and I have desoldered so much stuff it's not even funny okay um let's get the rest of this guy put together so this is the cartridge this is the cartridge slider this is going to be this is going to sit in here like that let's see i don't know if there was one way yeah i think like that Okay, everything fits pretty nice, nicely. Um, you can actually tell by the manufacturing, like this is pretty, pretty good quality. Nope, let's see, I don't think that's it. That didn't go in the other way, did it? I don't think so. Um, let me look at the... Um, I got another manual overall screen here. Um, you can go and get these other manuals online. Let me look at the way that's sitting there. Um, I don't have a picture of that. They don't have a picture of of how that sits in there. Let's see. Uh, yeah, they don't have a picture of. I should have should have taken a picture maybe before. Yeah, in the in the manual. They they sh they don't show. Um, no, nope, they don't show. That seems a little bit. That seems a little tight to me to have it like this. I don't know if it can go like that. I don't know if it can go like that because it won't have the travel. Or maybe that spring actually. Oh, you know what? That spring may get be what gives it the spring action i think it is i think that's fine so it's weird because i have that screw the screw tower there but if it wasn't like that you wouldn't have the spring motion this needs the spring forward to keep your can locked in and actually that works good if i pull it back that feels the same as it did before that's what another reason of that spring is like that spring actually has two purposes that's your spring tension 
to keep to keep that sealed up against your uh, can to create the vacuum and is to keep your tube from collapsing so okay I'm gonna roll with that I'm pretty sure that's the way it was there's if you had it down at the bottom this thing would have no spring if you had the motor turned around so that was my bad yeah on this assembly take good notes okay what else we have we have um, a couple more things that we oh, wait, uh -oh. Oh, this is okay so we have we have the trigger mechanism which has a little spring so let's put that guy in he's gonna go back on top so let's get him set in there there we go okay that's nice it just has a little, just has a little tab to line it up on. We also have the temperature, the temperature setting uh, that's got to be in here before the two cases go back on. Okay, so let's put. Okay, he is out of his groove. You need to go back in your groove, buddy. So PCB, little controller PCB has to be has to be in. Like that. Like so there's just like two little two grooves. So on the bottom, on the bottom there is a flat side that tells you which way your temperature indicator goes. All right. Okay. Wait. Oh, that guy totally popped off. Oh. Okay. Okay, so okay, so we're kind of re we're ready to start in on some other. We got to take care of this nozzle up here. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stand up again and show you guys. Nope, everything's falling back out. Okay, so yeah, so the the nozzle's got like a heat shield. This it has a heat shield that uses separate that uses separate screws to uh, attach the heat shield to the uh, case assembly and then you have screws to mount the whole assembly to the case so it's um yeah everything just fell back out whatever that's funny okay so let's we're gonna get these guys started first because you don't in hindsight you don't need to take off you do not need to take off the heat shield assembly to get this far so Let's let's get this stuff together. Yeah, I could probably cut, man. I could probably be like, oh, it's gonna be like a two-minute video. I could probably cut and come back after I put everything together, but I don't like that. I don't really like that. I like to actually make. Um, I want to make a good a good comprehensive video, wait, without losing my parts. <laughs> bastard yeah this is just a man I'm excited this is I have a lot of projects coming up and I'm excited this is gonna help get the juices flowing get my brain back in gear for the repairs coming up we got man uh, sitting over here next to me is maybe actually in the shot right now I have an MX2 um, a Panasonic A1F uh, this runs the, M the, M the MX2 motherboard, which is, uh, 
really kind of cool thing. I picked that up here local for, I think, like 10 bucks. But that was that's going to be a fun project. And um, I got William stuff still kind of in the queue. Okay. So that guy was the small one. Yeah, there's two different sizes of um, nuts used here. Not two nuts, two different sizes of nuts. <laughs> and then if... Um, So it's all pretty self-explanatory where this stuff goes. Yeah, the, I was thinking about doing some of this before I got on camera, but I wanted to film. Yeah, like I said, just kind of get back into practice filming so we can get on these projects the next time. Yeah, because I need this. I need this right away, actually. I need this for my Williams boards. So the Williams boards have already uh, done a lot of troubleshooting. I already did a lot of troubleshooting and um, I already know parts that I already know parts need to be need to be swapped out. Okay, so one, two. No, let's see. Yep, one, two. Oh, what did I do here? Okay, sorry. Yes, like that. What the hell? Oh, okay, I see. Oh, it was throwing me off. There's still one of the, the screws for the other side still in place. I was going, what the heck? So, it's going to be these guys. All right, let's get that started. Pain in my butt trying to hold that. Eh, not too bad of a pain. I'm going to start them all loose. There's four of them. We gotta start them. We're going to start them all loose, the side. Yeah, the next thing will be to get the case on. Wait. Just so you guys can see what I'm doing. Yeah, very well constructed. Man, there's like brass inserts for anything threaded or there's a nut. The plastic is nice and heavy. The motor, the, the, the PCB controller board down here, I went through and it looks like good parts good quality yeah i like i like the this japanese stuff here yeah they don't i don't know why these they don't sell these in america because um japan uses the same power as we do so all right so that's that guy back in let's put the put the Temperature gate, oh man, the PCB's all out of whack again. Last time, last time for you. Get your butt in there. Yeah, I like to take my, I just like to take my time. Make sure everything goes back normal. Okay. Now that's got to go back in. Now this can go back on. Everything's lined up. I really I like how they built this. Put that spring in. Wait. The magnet, that spring like sucked right to the motor. It's funny.
Oops. No, the spring's magnetized. All right. There we go. Okay, I think we're about there, guys. I'm ready to drop that case back on. Motors notched in. That's good. That's good. That's good. I think we're good. Let's put this guy. Let's put that guy on. Okay. I think these wires got to go. Uh, okay, hang on. Before we put that case on, let's get these wires down in the channel. I think they have to be, I think they have to be like that. Yeah, we're not done. We gotta put these wires where they go. We're gonna have problems. What, what the problem would be is maybe when that shaft swings around, it's gotta be, it's gotta be out of the way of that. And it is there, but man, not a lot of room there. You want to make sure. I actually wonder if there's any. No. Nope. There's a guide for around the shaft. No guides for those wires. Oh, you son of a bitch. All right. Let's get that guy on before our wire. Okay. Oh yeah. That those those wires gotta be moved. Something to push the wires in and around. All right, she's not snapping together. She's not snapping together. Ah, maybe here. Temperature tag, not straight. Okay, there goes the back. There goes the back. Yeah, just take your time, guys. When you work on stuff, don't force it. Then you're going to break it, and then you're going to have more time and money fixing and redoing everything. Ah, oh, crap, I forgot a part. Son of a bitch. All right, back apart we come. We forgot this guy. This is the front um, rubber, high temperature rubber that um, the solder comes through. So, I got that. Yep. Sorry, guys. So that's just a uh, high temperature rubber that attaches to right here. Ah, you know what? Son of a bitch. I'm going to have to. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to take that back off. Gosh darn it. Okay. Son of a bitch. All right. I will not say that too much. I don't like doing that on my videos. Maybe we just take one screw out. 
maybe we can take one screw out. Oh, man, everything's falling apart and flying everywhere. <laughs> this is worse than when I took it apart originally. Nope, both screws got to come out to get that out. All right, well, we're starting completely over again. That's okay. If um, you have a goot, you will learn. Not You will just learn, like, not to do what I just did. Yeah, this... The nozzle has the nozzle assembly has got to be off for for this guy. Then we can then that guy will go up in there. All right, that makes a lot more sense. That was my own fault for not paying attention. There, yep, like that. Okay, so let's get. that big of a setback and actually it probably help align those wires I don't know how long we've been filming for but I hope it's not too boring oh man I That's okay, I needed to come down on the floor and get the other piece anyway. Bye. All right. It is, it is pretty, it is a nice machine though. It is a nice machine. There it goes, okay. I didn't think that thing was starting. Just snug them up and just back them off a bit. Okay, there we go. All right, try this shit again. Man, my angle's like totally off. Okay. And again with all of this. Yeah, you know what? I think we have to cut here for a minute. I got something going on here. Okay, back. Yeah, I had to take a little break there. Okay, so let's put this thing together again. And looking at my stuff here. I think the spring, where's my spring for the trigger? Oh no, <laughs> I might have to cut again when it fell back apart. Who knows where it went? All right, let's get this guy in here. We will get, now with that, I do remember when I took this apart, these wires were tight. And I think, um, yeah, I just wanna kinda of be careful. That, that actually makes a lot more sense now. Okay, now with this piece in, all the wires kinda fall where they should. There is a narrow channel right here, like Hank Hill's narrow urethra, your urethra. Yeah, you got a narrow urethra right here. You need to pull a Hank Hill right here. Oh, that actually goes down in there real nice. Okay, ah, uh, okay. I see what's going on. On your metal case, on your plastic case, you do have a divider right here. So I had how I had it the first time. This has got to be clear. The wires will all lay right back there through Hank Hill's narrow urethra. Now narrow urethra. And I got to find that spring. Crap. <laughs> oh, man. Um, let me look around here. Please be, please be near. Don't want to cut again. 
All right, well, oh, there it is. I found it. It was like way off camera. Boy, I'm glad that they got me on. Oh, gosh darn. So glad that didn't go far. All right, there we go. You stay. You stay. Everybody stay right where you need to be. This little PCB, there's a lot of wires here, and they're pretty... They're like 18 gauge too. I mean, the, 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 this is just a good piece of equipment. All right. It's weird, they got two grooves here so that PCB can go in either groove. The one groove it's offset in. I understand why they do that, I think, but the the groove the outermost groove will actually put your it, the outer groove still puts your con, your heat control knob flush so i did not notice that when i when i pulled it apart that there were two grooves maybe i don't know i, I don't know why all right Okay, that field. Ah, okay, she went down. So, yeah, get your... Oh! Oh, my God. The tripod went over. Why? The tripod went over. I'm sorry, guys. This is awful. What a mess. What a freaking mess. What a mess. Oh, man. I think we're going to have to cut technical difficulties. All right. Tripod stabilized. Let's go. See if anything else fell apart again during that whole ordeal. All right. Let me get this guy in. Okay. So this PCB is in the right place. I think, I think the wires here are okay. Okay. Yeah, you just have to take your time. It's it's worth it. You know, this is a very crucial piece of equipment for your arcade repair and your electronics repair. So, just take your time because if you don't, you're going to break something or lose something and then and you just want to make sure that you repair just like when we fix the arcade boards you know any repair any repair you do is, should be quality and that's kind of where i am in my life and my career like i i don't like shoddy work at all i don't care if it's my car my my anything if i'm rebuilding anything i can i can rebuild all that i can do it all and you're just best just to kind of just take your time that's a lot better that is a lot better so everything's in. I have um, this wire here. Let's see if we can kind of push them down a little. Yep. Just want to be careful with your wires too. You don't need, don't want to break them off like at the solder, at the solder point. But the better we can lay all that stuff in here, the easier that top case will go on. Yeah, that's just tight. All of that is just tight. Okay, but I knew that before. And you, I can't wait to get the case on so you stop popping off. Okay, let's give it a shot. Good. We got our temperature plate, trigger, housing, that's torqued, that the the bearings torqued, the pump, the pump is torqued, nothing else inside got torqued, all that we can do from the outside. Alright, let's drop this dude on. We've got, 
pink hills, the urethra holding us up here. Sorry if that's not a great view, but I need to be able to get this thing all lined up without pinching any wires. Something's pin something is something's not happy right here. Or maybe even up here. Yeah, something's not happy up here. Okay, before you force it, let's just take it, let's just take it off. Have a look, see what see what the problem is. Yeah. Get in there. Yeah, what's your problem? Something's not happy right up in here. I wonder if it's I wonder if it's these wires there. Let's get those down a little. That, that was looking pretty good. So we've got behind the trigger, down the motor. Oh, my own fault, look, there's a screw, one of the screws from um, that case screw right here that didn't come out all the way is blocking that case there. All right, but something's still not happy. It's like right in here. Yep, something's rocking right here. Something is rocking right in there. It could be where that um, slot is for that motor. I think the slot for that motor some oh oh there she goes there she goes boom nope gosh It's that slot for the motor. Yeah, wait. And then back here we got a problem. Man, she went together that time. But, but, I think that motor, I think the actual pump, no, I think the pump in the back groove is not lining up. Yep, something's up with this, that pump, that pump is not lining up. be a five hour video trying to get this case on <laughs> I 
Yeah, that's the problem when that key when that when that sits in there that this tab this tab right here has got to line up perfectly in this tab. I might have to get a, a tool or something up in there and fish it around or push on it, try to push on it. But she's wanting to go back together. She's mostly there. Alright. I wonder if I get this pump in a different... Get all this stress off of that. Alright. Do this again. Do it again. All right. So it's definitely that pump. Let me see if I can see. Look up in there. It's hard to tell which way it has to go to line up. Almost need something smaller than that. I think it's gonna be luck of the draw. I just gotta oh wait, gotta wiggle it around till it goes in, just like that. Wow, we got lucky there. Wow, I think we're most, yep, 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 and got a problem back here on the back end. Okay, that's together there, but this guy, it is not together here proper. That sucks, because the rest of it is. <laughs> Same thing. I think it's that um, that PCB not fitting up in. Somebody could leave it like that, but. I don't want to leave it like that. I don't know if you guys can see the gap is wider here it's not it's not it's not together right there maybe I can leave the top in and just pop this bottom same deal I think we're So I'm holding pressure up at the top. I'm going to try to... Yeah, because we got the pump in. Yeah. I'm just going to have to wiggle it. think that was gapped out like that it's so freaking close and all the rest is good all right 
right, we're going to have to pull it off again. Yeah, it's not sitting. Yeah, get some of that strain off of there. Yeah, all the wire strain is just kind of tweaking that little PCB out. Let me get some of this stuff bent. Maybe the help will. Let's see. Probably have a big guy at the bottom. Oh, maybe, maybe, oh, maybe right there it was. Maybe right there it was hitting a little bit. shit up again. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm just looking. The wires will come. This is Hank Hill's narrow urethra right here. Alright, Hank. Damn it, Bobby. There she is. There she is. Oi, no. No. Now we're back to an alignment problem up top. Yeah, the bottom is good. The bottom is good now, but not the top. All right. Well, there. There's the front. There's the front. Okay. So I have to do the same thing with this pump. I have to get in there. There it is. Now the bottom screwed up. And now the bottom screwed up again. Damn it. It was just in. That sucks. Yeah, I would never be happy if that's not closed all the way. I would. I. I just couldn't deal with it. <laughs> all right, do it again. Funny, what is the problem? I think it's just, I just don't want to sit flat. Well, the wires look good, we're not messing any of those up. I just noticed, I don't know, let me stand up and look. Something wasn't aligning. See, there's a tab right here, broke off. So it's the top of that PCB not wanting to sit in there. It broke off. I just found the tab laying here. And I wasn't even pushing all that hard. But that, that PCB is. Everything's just got to be lined up perfect.
Now the pump is jacking things up. Tell you what, man, I'm about ready to put some freaking hot glue in that in that guy. Just a dab. Yeah, he's not even in a slot. There. Okay, you stay in your slot. You stay in your slot. Stay in your lane. This piece. Yeah, about ready to get the hot glue and just tack some of the shit down, some of the stuff down. But it's okay. Let's see. Alright, this is the one. This is the one. Might be the one. Nope, something's sitting in the middle. And the pump is out. And the bottom's still not in. And the bottom's still not in. Damn it. Everything else is good. And the bottom's not in. Damn it, man. Yeah, this is a good video to start before the repair so I can get my patience back. I don't know what the f what, what's going on here, but this is not cool. I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit frustrated here. This guy does not want to stay in. What the hell is the deal?
missing something? the strain relief off this guy. All the strain relief off. And this PCB keeps getting freaking jacked up. I wonder if I put, if I put this in, will that help hold that? A little. Alright, let's put that guy in to help hold that. To help hold that pump. Alright, pump is in. This guy, okay. He's in the right groove. Or something. Nope, it's totally, totally open, these grooves. It's down all the way. All right, no strain relief. Okay, all right, here we go. This is the one. This is the one. This is the one. Yeah, I love this gun, man, and it's definitely worth the time. It is definitely worth the time. Alright. That bottom does not want to go in. That just pisses me off. Something is holding that out at the bottom, and I, I just don't get it. And, all right, let's um, let's get this guy back. Let's see. Let's get this guy back. Let's get him together. Get the pump. Oh man. frustrating me guys
All right, so far so good. Let's get this pump back into shape and back in its position. Yeah, I'm just getting in there and trying to wiggle that pump around. Damn it, man. Oh, there she goes. Okay. There she goes. And that bottom will not pull in. This bottom will not pull in. It's, I don't know why. We're going to go ahead and put, we're going to put some screws in and try to tighten it, pull this thing together. I'm, I'm about done messing with it and as perfect as I want it to be. I don't know if it will ever be perfect. So let's get, let's get a couple of these screws started. That's the thing with like alignments. It's uh, the thing with alignments. You, if something's out of a line, it could very well, it could very well. Okay, so you got shorter ones and long, longer ones. Let's see, take a longer one. Yeah, if something's out of a line and you go to tighten it down, if it's plastic, it, it could very easily just snap whatever's inside. kind of started. That pump's still in. Yep. Alright. Is this a longer one or shorter one? This is going to be a shorter one. Get the nut on the nut side. Get the pump area held down. Snug. Uh oh. Oh, I think it's just a trigger. There it goes. All right. Is this a longer one or shorter one? This is going to be oh, only two long ones left. All right. All right. And then we got one here. One nut left. This is a little hex nut. This problem child one is oh, 
Hopefully nothing breaks down here at the bottom. Okay. So I'm going to go for the snug. Okay, we're just going to go through. Just kind of go in a circular pattern for now. Feel it snug up. And it's just stop and move on. Yes. It's good. Okay. Yeah, I'm putting some pretty good pressure, just kind of going slow and feeling that torque. Okay. Got two more screws. Got two more screws up here. This is um, the nozzle assembly to the other side of the case. heat shield to the nozzle assembly torqued 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 okay that's all the nozzle assembly stuff I'm just gonna I'm gonna go through these one more time torqued 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 and torqued all right, guys, there we go. There we go, back together. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not digging that. Let me stand up, I can see. I don't like that. There's a little bit of a gap there. This, this would not pull in. And I'm, I'm wondering if it's like that from the factory. You've seen it. We, like, we've been through that so many times. This is seated good. That PCB. And you can tell that the PCB is set set good because uh, this potentiometer or control temperature for is it's flush and it's straight. That's actually more straight than it was from the factory. It was kind of whopper jawed new. It wasn't it wasn't in the center of that hole, but it is now. All right, so. And turn it down, keep it turned down. All right, so let's let's power it on and see if we got vacuum. Good lord, boy. Ah, uh, you know, it, it's worth the time. I just wanted to make sure it was back together okay. It, it, I'm, right, so, all right, so we're plugged in. Huh? Oh, my goodness. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, there's suction, oh yeah, so I had a friend who was, uh, I'll tell you a story about my friend, I won't, you know who you are if you're watching this video, I had a friend testing for Tested for vacuum and uh, not thinking about it, he just sticks his finger on <laughs> and uh, to test for the vacuum. And he said it like it it burned him so bad, like it's filled up with smoke, finger finger smoke. It burned him bad. So don't do that if you're test for vacuum. Don't test it there because that's hot. And then um, yeah, you can test here. <laughs> I mean that's hot. That that's pulling hard. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. All right. So that is that's gonna wrap this up. Now we can get now we can get busy. 
Now we can get busy. I've got the MX board. I'm, I got some work to do on that guy. There's a bad clock, and we got the William stuff. But yeah, take care of your guns. If um, sometimes you just have to like go deeper than the normal maintenance, and usually things are fixable if you buy good stuff. So again, Goot TP100. That was uh, the internal open heart surgery and maintenance. All right, guys, hit give me a like and subscribe. All right, see ya. Bye.